Hi everybody, my name is Bree and welcome back to my channel, Bree Zarts. All right, everybody, I'm so excited about today's video because this video is sponsored by Cricut. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know how much I absolutely love using my Cricut for my home decor projects. And I can't stress this enough, investing in a Cricut will absolutely up your game for your home decor, for any gifts that you wanna make for your loved ones this holiday season, card making, like the list goes on and on and the possibilities are endless. So you guys, I'm so excited to show you what I've made with my Cricut today. And what we are doing is Christmas Kirkland's dupes. So I am going to show you some amazing projects and how much money I saved by making them myself. And with all of that being said, you guys, drum roll please, let's get into the first DIY. All right, everybody, here we go with DIY number one. So this tray I saw on the Kirkland's website, it is $34.99. So we're gonna start with one of these artist palettes from Dollarama. And I'm going to take my white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum and we're just going to shablam, paint the whole entire thing up. I did do two coats of the, the Rust-Oleum paint on all of the sides and the bottom as well and so now what we're going to do because if you notice in the inspiration picture it did show that there um there were lines like it looked like shiplap and so we're going to do kind of like a faux shiplap here so i'm just measuring out to find the center of the inside of this tray and I'm just gonna take my pencil and create a line all the way across with my pencil and so here I'm just going to use my finger and we are just going to smudge that line so it gives the illusion of faux shiplap it's brilliant <laughs> And I'm going to do this, um, I'm gonna separate it into four, so three lines. So here I am finding the center of both of those and then doing the exact same thing. So drawing the line with my pencil and then we are just going to do that on the other side as well. And then we're going to take our finger and smudge that out just like that. This is the easiest way to give that look on this tray. So there we go. And now we are headed into Cricut Design Space. So what I always do is I always find a shape that is the same as the surface that I'm going to be putting my design on. So I just grab a square here and I'm putting in the size. And then I always make it white as well, just so that it's a little bit easier to see. And so now I am going to put our text words on here. So we're going to spell out winter wonderland. And we have to change the font as well. So I just looked up cottage. I've used this a lot, this font. And so I knew that it was going to be one that I really liked. And so we are going to ungroup all of the letters and I'm just gonna kind of fiddle with them a little bit. I didn't want them to be completely uniform. So I am going to take, you know, like the taller letters, the W and the T, and we're just going to, you know, make them different sizes and whatnot. And so here I figured, you know what, I'm just going to delete that W and we're just going to duplicate it and put it over so it's the same size. And of course we're gonna wanna line those up so that they're nice and straight and then I'm also going to uh, change the size of the D and of the L just to make them a little bit taller and to give your words a little bit more interest right and then we are going to duplicate that D take it over to the end delete the other one and put it on there so now I just move the rectangle out of the way and we are going to attach these. We're gonna weld them together so it is just one 
words. So when we cut it to the Cricut, um, it will cut out as one word. If you ever find that you're doing lettering and the, the letters are cutting out like as single letters and they're not blending together for a script font, then just make sure that you weld them together. And so here I am going to find a snowflake. So I just put in um, cut only and single layer uh, to find a snowflake that would be fairly easy to cut. You can see there are a bajillion images in Cricut Des Design Space. So you will definitely be able to find one that you really like. So I just chose three of them. I kind of liked this one, but I thought, eh, it's a little bit too thick. So we're gonna go with this snowflake here. So I'm just gonna adjust it to size and we're gonna put three inches by three inches and then lock that so that it doesn't change at all. And then just put that in the center. I just love how um, putting the rectangle on there, it looks like the project, right? It's perfect. And so now I just changed the color of the lettering so it all prints out on the same color or cuts out on the same color with the machine. And I'm just kind of fiddling with it just to make sure that everything looks good. And it's telling me that the project is incompatible because I'm going to use my joy for this, my Cricut joy. Now, if you um, don't want to invest heavily in the Cricut and you just want to give it a whirl, try the joy, you guys. You can do so many projects with the joy. And it is a lot less expensive than, say, the Explore Air or the Maker. Um, I use my joy all the time for really quick projects. And so I just set that to cut and there it is, my little joy. I just, oh, it's the cutest thing and it cuts out so well. And of course I'm using this smart vinyl so I don't need a mat, but you can use any type of vinyl and um, there are mats that come with the joy as well. So there we go, cutting, cutting, cutting. And we are going to weed this baby out. So um, you can't really see it, but I'm cutting off the snowflake there. And now I'm just going to weed out this smart vinyl here. So sometimes I don't know if this happens to you guys, but you know, when you're pulling on the vinyl and it kind of pulls things up, um, but you know, most of the time it cuts really precisely. You can see that I'm just pulling the excess vinyl off of there and it came off no problem. And this is my new weeding tool. It's amazing. Um, I got it from Cricut and it has a whole bunch of different attachments to it and you just have to click it in there and you pull out whatever tool you want to use. There are a few um, weeding tools as well as an X-Acto knife in that set. So love, love, love that. And so now I'm just weeding out all of the little pieces here for the Winter Wonderland. Weed, weed, weed. And this tool is amazing. It's super sharp, very precise. And there we go. So then I unlock it and I stick it back into the holder, release it, and there we go. We've got our weeding tool. Oh, it's so great. I love it. It's fantastic. And so now just using some transfer tape, we are going to use our big scraper here and go along um, and get the, the vinyl onto the transfer tape. Now, one thing I do want to caution is that sometimes the transfer tape is a little bit sticky, so you do want to kind of fuzz it. I usually fuzz it on my shirt um, just so that it's not too sticky because if it is too sticky, you won't be able to transfer the vinyl onto your project. Um, so just kind of do that before you, you put the vinyl on there. Now, one other thing too, I do find that sometimes the smart vinyl is a little difficult to get onto the transfer tape. Um, 
you know, I always use my weeding tool to kind of help it along, but uh, you really do have to apply a lot of pressure to get it onto the transfer tape, but it does definitely go on there. It's always easiest to actually pull the backing off, just like I'm doing here, kind of do it upside down, um, and then it will, it will come off a lot easier onto the transfer tape. So there we go. And now just placing that onto my project, making sure it's nice and centered and burnishing it down with my Cricut tool there, pulling off the transfer tape and voila, look at that. <laughs> It looks so good. And then of course, you know, weeded out my little snowflake here, uh, burnishing it down and there we go. And so now I got these, um, these handles. I have a whole package of them. I think I got them from Home Depot for like 10 bucks. They were on sale and I think there were 12 of them in the package. So super, super inexpensive. Um, you can also find hardware like this at a thrift store, um, on Facebook marketplace. Like you can find hardware anywhere. So, um, I'm just drilling some holes here to put the screws in through now because the tray, like I wanted to lay flat and I didn't want any of the, like the, the screws to, um, so to make it so it wasn't flat. So I'm just using my diggy bit. I don't remember what it's called. And I know in my last video, when I used the diggy bit, people told me what it was called, but it just didn't stick in my brain. So we're going to call it the diggy bit. And just so that the screws are flush on the bottom of this tray. And then we are going to um, screw the screws in there and attach this hardware on. This is like a very true dupe, you guys. Like it's almost identical to the original Kirkland's tray. I absolutely love it. So all done. And you can see here that it was 35 bucks and I did mine for $6. All right, everybody, I really hope that you're enjoying today's video. And as usual, I'm just popping in here to remind you that if you like home decor on a budget, stuff that looks like super high end, like you got it at a high end store, <clears throat> Kirkland's, but you made it yourself and out of things from the dollar store, then you have come to the right place. So make sure that you tap that like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure that your notification bell is set to all so that you don't miss any of my uploads. And of course, breezers, all you breezers out there. <laughs> this is my shout out to all of my subscribers, my old subscribers, my new subscribers, and everybody in between. Thank you so much for chilling with me every now and then. And mwah, I love you so much. So with that being said, let's get back into those projects. And jumping right into DIY number two. And I thought that this was so cute and it's $41, $41. And that's on sale, y'all, that's on sale. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just taking a piece of tape. It is upside down, so the sticky side is up. And I'm gonna take a whole bunch of these um, half wooden beads that I got off of Amazon. And this is the easiest way to paint these half beads. Um, thank you to Kathy Joe. Hey, Kathy Joe um, from Kathy Joe DIY. Um, she's the one, that, she's the only person that I've seen do this. So I totally uh, got this from her. She's so smart and I love her so much. So just placing some paper towel underneath and grabbing my white chalk paint, we are going to paint all of these half wooden beads up. Now, they don't have to be perfect, you guys. Um, 
I didn't make mine perfect. And uh, look at that. Did you see that transition? <laughs> that was fabulous. Um, but yeah, they don't have to be perfect at all. And so this wood round I got off of Amazon too. And shablam. It is painted up with the white chalk paint as well. This is a 12 inch round, I believe. And so now I've set up all of my beads on the, um, on the wood round and I used 50 in total, just so you know, and I'm just going to go around and hot glue each one of those down around the perimeter of this wood round. So there we go. And now I cut this out on my Cricut and you guys make sure that you check out my um, Cricut link as well. It will be down in the description box. You can uh, get all of these on Cricut Design Space by using my link. So um, if you want to make this yourself, you can absolutely do it that way as well. So there we go. Put that all down on there. This is so easy, you guys. Ugh. The cricket is amazing. <laughs> and so here, I just wanted to add a little bit to mine because it's not identical and I just felt like it needed something. So we're gonna do a bow. And using this Buffalo check ribbon that I got at Michael's, um, I'm just gonna make a fairly simple bow. So um, taking a piece there and uh, folding it into three, and then I am also taking a longer piece and that is going to be for the tails. And we're just gonna scrunch those together in the center. And um, in the middle, we're just gonna use a zip tie to attach those two pieces together, just like that. And of course, we're going to floof and floof and floof <laughs> and fiddle and floof. <laughs> and then cut off the uh, the tail of that zip tie. And then just using a little piece here, I'm just gonna fold, fold it into thirds and that is gonna be the center of our bow. So I just, you know, it's wired, right? So I just twisted it at the back and then kind of just tucked it in and that was the center of the bow. Now, of course, it would be better to hot glue it. Um, I do eventually hot glue it, but I just, at the beginning, just twisted it there. And then we are going to hot glue that bow to the very top of our wood round here. And that is it for this project, you guys. It is so simple and so cheap, and it looks so good. Like, I can't even, it's so pretty. Isn't it pretty? And then of course I am going to dovetail the um, the tails of my bow here, <laughs> just as a finishing touch. But there we go. And then I put a hanger on the back as well. So you can see here, uh, theirs is $42, uh, mine is four. Thank you. All right, and last one, you guys, DIY number three. This one will blow your mind. Look at that. It's a fairly simple canvas for $70. Come on now. So I got this canvas at Dollarama. Um, they have a ton of canvases actually at Dollarama, a whole bunch of different uh, sizes and whatnot. And we are going to uh, do that kind of plaid effect on here. So this is really, really super simple. Um, a little bit tedious, but totally worth it in the end. So I'm just using some painter's tape that I got at the Dollar Tree and taping off the two sides there. And then we're gonna make stripes, obviously. So first we're gonna start with the horizontal stripes. And you guys, I just eyeballed it. Like, you can absolutely measure it out if you want to. I'm just like, yeah, that looks about good. <laughs> Only because I'm kind of lazy and I just didn't wanna have to, you know, fiddle a lot. And then I'm go also going to do a stripe down the middle. So um, I just figured putting two together, that's a good enough size, right? And now when you're using canvas, 
and you want to get crisp lines, you absolutely either must use the same paint color as what is underneath. So you could use uh, white paint in this instance. I am using Mod Podge. This seals off the tape so you get those crisp lines. I cannot stress this enough. It is so important that you do that because if you don't, because the canvas is textured, you it will bleed. It will bleed for sure. And so here you can see, I, I didn't have a light gray. I used to have Parisian gray by Folk Art, um, but it got dried out, which makes me very sad. So I have to get some more, but I just used Maui sand and some white paint. And that's how I got this uh, really nice gray color. It's a little bit dark, but don't worry. We're gonna, we're gonna make it amazing. I promise. <laughs> and so I'm just painting um, the stripes, like with the, with my chippy brush. Um, super easy and i didn't want to necessarily completely cover it so you can't really tell but there are a lot of brush strokes in my in my paint job there which i was a hundred percent cool with and you will see why at the end here so when you're doing this technique i reuse my tape um there's no reason why you can't um it just you know let's save save on materials you know so you don't have to run out or go and buy some more you know what i'm saying and so now um, I did want to do two more like thinner stripes, um, just like the inspiration piece. So um, I am just putting the tape back on and doing really, really thin stripes next to the thick stripe in the center of the canvas there. So just reusing my tape and again, 100% eyeballing. Um, if you want to measure, you do you boo. You do you. So there we go. Tape it off. Do the Mod Podge thing and snap. There we go. So I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love taking off the painter's tapes and seeing my nice crisp, crisp lines. So you're welcome for this little bit of um, eye candy that you're witnessing right now because I'm not going to lie my lines were perfect. And that is because of the Mod Podge. No joke, trust me, trust me, trust me. So I had said that it was a little bit dark. We're gonna remedy that right now. So I'm just taking my chippy brush here and we are just going to take some white chalk paint and just dry brush along these stripes. So just to dull it down. And it also, you know, gives it a little bit of texture um, makes it, you know, distressed and whatnot. I really like the look that this, uh, that this gave me as, as the end result here. Um, I think it looks fabulous. <laughs> All right. So now we are going to do the vertical lines. So again, just taping off um, again, Brie is eyeballing everything and it works out perfectly. So we are going to do this on, uh, on the side here, that center, um, line. And then I just use a piece of the painter's tape as a guide in between as well. Um, to put up my next piece of tape. I hope all of this makes sense, you guys. You can see what I'm doing. <laughs> like, oh, sometimes the words escape me. So again, just eyeballing that, doing the thing, you know, making sure that it is nice and straight. And there we go. And we're gonna do that on both sides. And then we are also going to use that Maui sand and white mixture that I had made and do the exact same thing, making these lines. So it's very deceiving, like you're just making these thin lines and, and with all of that tape on there, you don't really know exactly what it's gonna look like at the end. Like, look at how nice that looks. That looks, it looks fabulous. <laughs> I'm I'm so happy with how this one came out, you guys. It's so pretty. It's so freaking pretty. All right, and so of course I used the dry brush again, and now we are going to do one more line on each side uh, vertically on this canvas. So last time, 
taping it off and making sure that it's even, nice and straight, Mod Podge, and then we are using Grotto by Folk Art. So it's a beautiful green. It's not like a super Christmassy green, but it's more, ugh, it's so hard to, it's like a, not really a bluish green, it's so pretty. And it was perfect for this project, I thought. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, we're going to use the chippy brush again, and we're gonna distress that green down just a titch. Uh, we don't want it to be too overwhelming, obviously. And we want it all to match the project, but isn't it pretty? Oh, I love this. I think it is so high-end looking. Okay, so now back into Cricut Design Space. And so we are going to do Merry Christmas, just like the inspiration. And so um, keep in mind, there's a ton of fonts and there's a whole bunch of different categories as well. And so I just kind of scroll over and I'm going to go into contemporary and we're choosing the, the Sackers Gothic, I believe it is, Sack, Sackers Gothic. And I thought that that was a perfect font for, for this project. And now we're gonna go into our images uh, type in Christmas and here I am going to change it to cut only we're gonna do single layer and we're gonna do phrases and so there's a whole bunch of phrases that come up um, that say Christmas or you know joy to the world you know um, just a whole schwack of different phrases that you can find within Cricut Design Space deck the halls like it's fabulous so I did find a couple of Christmas words here and it, you know, it's always trial and error. You guys, like I don't go into Cricut design space knowing exactly what I am going to do. It seems like that with this, um, this video, but legit I am in there and I'm fiddling around and I'm trying to find the right font and I'm trying to find the right images and whatnot. And you just have to experiment. Like it's so much fun to figure these out and to find the different images and fonts and everything else within Cricut Design Space. And so here you can see like, I'm just kind of fiddling with it. I don't know which Christmas I'm gonna use, like which one, which one, which one. And I decide on the top one. So what you can also do um, is, I think I do it here. Yeah, so you can like squish things together. You can make them wider. Um, you can make them taller as long as you unlock them in the uh, edit tool in Cricut Design Space. And then also what I'm going to do here, right away I believe, um, I'm going to um, increase the, okay, so we'll squish it together first. And then I am going to increase the letter spacing. So you can make the space between the letters bigger as well. And I just like the look of that better um, with, this, with this project. And again, you know, just fiddling, just making sure that my eyes are happy, making sure that, you know, it looks like the inspiration piece as well. And we are going to uh, use some stencil vinyl for this one because we are gonna stencil this one. Um, and we have to make sure that it fits the, the uh, project that we're making. Um, it cannot be any bigger than 12 inches. I think I did have it set right at 12 inches, but then I took it down to 11 and a half inches just so that it was compatible with, with the Cricut. So I am going to be using the Maker for this one. And so we're gonna send it to cut and we're gonna cut this on a mat because I'm not using the Smart Vinyl for this particular project. We are gonna use some um, stencil vinyl instead. So there we go. See, I'm still fiddling. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. It's very, it's, it's very difficult to 
edit everything so that it makes sense because it legit takes me a lot of time to get these um, images all together. So here you want to make sure, especially when you're doing stenciling, that you give enough space for your stencil so it's not like super close to everything else. Um, you want to make sure that you have enough room on each side so that you don't have to tape off a lot of your stencil vinyl um, so that you don't get excess paint on your project. And so here's my beautiful Jimmy. We call him Jimmy Cricket, Jiminy's cousin. And um, yeah, he's cutting out, he's cutting out this uh, stencil vinyl like a champ. The, the maker, you guys, like to invest in a maker is such a good idea. Um, I love my maker. I use I use all of my Cricuts for different reasons. The maker though is just so fast and it's so efficient and it cuts beautifully. So yeah, yeah, get yourself a Cricut. <laughs> and so because this is a stencil, we're going to weed out the letters instead of leaving them, right? Um, so here I am just weeding everything out just like that. You can see I, it is sped up a little bit, but um, so, so easy to weed. And onto the transfer tape, making sure that everything is centered. Don't push it down so that you can actually move it around on your project to get it nice and straight and centered. And so I, because it's a canvas, I had to put something underneath it as well because it would concave, right? So wanted to make sure that it was um, nice and sturdy when I'm burnishing everything down for the for the stencil and just pulling that up and there we go voila and again with that beautiful grotto color um, and my Debbie brush and we are just going to dab 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 all the way across the stencil now again I did I didn't show it but I did use Mod Podge you guys prior to um, putting the paint on because again same thing as with the lines it will bleed if you don't put something under there and the last thing you want after you did all of that work on all of those beautiful crisp lines is for your lettering to bleed so again we're going to do that with the mary how beautiful is this color tell me it, oh it's now my second favorite color because of course nantucket blue is my favorite but oh like that is absolutely gorgeous I love this project so much and it's done. It's so easy. So get this, $70 they wanted for that. I did mine for five bucks. Alright everybody, that is it for today's video. Look at that. It, it That is stunning. It is so beautiful. I love doing that plaid technique with paint and I just can't even get over how pretty that is. Now I definitely want to say thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring this video. I use my Cricut in pretty much every single one of my videos. So um, it's no surprise that I absolutely love, love, love all of these projects. And just let me know down in the comments, which one of these is your favorite? Would you make any of these? Like going on to Kirkland's and finding things that you can make for so much cheaper than what they're selling it for. That, it, that's just my happy place. It is my happy place, you guys. I absolutely love doing that. So thank you so much for watching. And with all of that being said, you guys, if you like what you see, do me a solid tap that like button, maybe subscribe, tell your friends, you know, all of that jazz. Stay tuned for the gag reel. Bye guys. So for today's projects, I can't wait to show you what I am. <laughs> Did the hair a little bit darker guys. It's winter time.
Gotta go a little darker. <laughs> Lips are pretty dark today. I'm giving off a dark vibe. Darkness. <laughs> so I just have to show you guys something. So um, I don't know how well you can see it, but I got a new tattoo and I got it with my daughter. And so what it is, is a sprig of lavender. And when she was little, I don't know if anybody remembers, but there's like a Johnson & Johnson baby wash and it's lavender scented to calm them before bed. And whenever I would use that baby wash with her, I would always sing, lavender's blue, dilly dilly, lavender's green. And <laughs> so she and I decided to get matching tattoos. And I absolutely, I love them. Like we've been talking about this for years. So we finally pulled the trigger and got these tattoos. And I just absolutely love them. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> Already? You guys, we're like six weeks away. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> was better <laughs> and if you invest in a cricket it will absolutely up your game in any gift giving or <laughs> gift gift giving mm, I don't even know what did I what did I even say <laughs> uh, let's just review real quick <laughs> Dang, I'm getting good at this. <laughs> oh, well, you know, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> oh. So make sure that you tap that like button. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> oh, man, we'll get through it. <laughs>